I'm working at the Institute for Geoinformatics in Edsa Pebismas lab as a postdoc or postdoctoral researcher. And currently I'm actually expecting my parental leave. Oh. But other than that, I'm mainly working on um, currently on deep learning or exploring deep learning for UAV based data analysis and um, we're kind of exploring how deep learning can be useful for such high resolution data. Um, yeah, that's maybe. I haven't done a um, computer science degree or anything. I've been, so I've studied geography. Um, so that makes me by, by default not a kind of experienced programming student or something. But then I did my PhD in geoinformatics and of course I did some courses in coding related fields, but uh, it's also a lot of um, self-teaching involved. I, I've never had this one topic that I'm all, always working on. Um, I've changed quite a lot. Um, I've done all types of um, analyses in the field of remote sensing mainly. And this one I've started a few months ago only. And, um, but um, I've been working with UAV remote sensing data uh, for many years already. That's basically what brought me to using or to trying to use uh, deep learning because we've tried other methods for dealing with such high resolution data and finally ended up with deep learning. And what's the... Well, of course R and also QGIS, although I, some, I sometimes hate it, but most of the time I love it. But what I really like about it is um, it's pretty convenient to use when everything works. Um, it's yeah, more or less like a, it's very well established GIS, but it's open source. Um, what I hate about it is that, um, or when I hate it is when sometimes things doesn't work because uh, don't work because um, um, I have the feeling that the community involved in doing QGIS sometimes not as integrated as it is in R. So in R when you kind of install a package from CRAN then it's going to work. And that's not always the case when you try certain things with QGIS. So I, I guess it's going to be more based on cloud computing. Um, so there will be less processing being done on local computers and more on, on like computers, server farms, so that you kind of just move your code to some uh, larger cloud computing um, systems and execute it there. And uh, I guess there's also probably going to be more uh, um, a return towards um, reproducibility, reproducible research, just because it's becoming more and more um, convenient to work reproducible and also, not only developers but also users are going to experience the advantages of working reproducible also for also for their own um, for their own research. Just to be able to reproduce your own data at, or your own research two years later is a big advantage. Especially if you're kind of tending to forget things like I am, then that's a big plus also on the user side. So I guess that's also something that's going to be more and more becoming more and more popular. We have, we also kind of trying to get more um, female students in our study programs always. I think it, um, it's not only the problem of the open source community, but in, in, in general of any um, information technology field more or less. I think we have to get, um, we have to get um, girls interested, raise their interest in that field more and earlier because how can we expect to have 50% female software developers when the percentage of female students starting a informatics or information technology bachelor's degree is already much lower than 50%. How are we going to make up for that? So I think we have to start much earlier to raise the interests. I think it starts when they are little child already. Stop giving, giving them only puppets to play with. Give them also like what you would give your boys to and just see what they prefer. Well, 
it certainly can reduce inequality since it's not only open but also free to use. So if kind of more people get access to good software because it is not expensive, that's of course reducing inequality. And um, it might also reduce inequality because people with not that, or who don't have large resources but large brains can still kind of contribute more to software development and um, research in general.